Hi viewers, welcome to my class on mechanics of materials. In today's class, I will introduce a new topic, torsion of circular shafts. In engineering applications, shafts are used to transmit power. While transmitting power, these shafts are subjected to torque or twisting moment. These torque will introduce shear stresses and shear deformations in the shaft. If these stresses and deformations are not within permissible limit, shafts fail to perform its intended duty. So let us derive a torsion equation for circular shaft. Consider a circular shaft with uh, radius r and length l fixed at one end and subjected to a torque at the other end. Now due to this torque applied, if the shaft is not rigid, it will undergo some deformation, angular deformation. And this deformation is shown in this figure. Now I will consider a fiber on the outer surface AB. Before applying the torque, this fiber AB is straight. Now once the torque is applied, a clockwise torque is applied at the free end the point B moves to C. So there is a movement of this free end. So the point B moves to C and each point on the line AB moves and take a different position. So this fiber on the outer surface AB after applying the torque deforms and take a shape AC. So that is a shear deformation. So on this surface the fiber undergoes a shear deformation. A layer on the surface of the shaft undergoes a shear deformation and the shear deformation is represented by phi s. So I represented this as phi s, phi for shear strain and s denoting the surface. Now if you consider an inner layer, I have shown it by a different color. I say at a radius smaller, the deformation is DE. Now if you consider an inner layer, it will undergo less deformation. Uh, on the surface, uh, point B moves to C. At any other radius, the point moves uh, through a lesser distance. Say for example, if at a radius smaller, the point D moves to E. Now let us calculate the shear strain on the surface. Now the shear strain on the outer layer AB, outer layer AB is uh, BC by L, BC by L. So that is tan phi is equal to BC by L or tan phi is equal to phi because phi is small. So shear strain phi S is equal to BC by L. So phi S is equal to BC by L. So on the surface of the shaft, shear strain is BC by L and BC, uh, this arc length, you can calculate as R into uh, theta, where theta is the angular rotation. I have shown this cross section enlarged here. So theta is the angular rotation. So BC is equal to R into theta. So that will give the arc length BC. So BC can be replaced by R theta. So phi s is equal to r theta by l. Now phi s is r theta by l. Now phi s is a shear strain. You can use the Hooke's law to replace shear strain in terms of shear stress. So within the elastic limit, shear strain is a ratio of shear stress to modulus of rigidity. So shear stress divided by modulus of rigidity is a shear strain. From the Hooke's law, you get shear strain as tau divided by g. So here I have written as tau s to represent it as shear stress on the surface. So tau s by g is equal to r theta by l. Now shear stress tau s is equal to r theta by l into g or rearranging g theta by l into r. So shear stress uh, on the surface is equal to e theta by l into r. 
that is the shear stress induced on the surface of the shaft this is because of deformation deformation induces a stress on the shaft and on the outer surface you will have shear stress as g theta by l into r now i have shown an yellow colored inner portion so that is to differentiate an inside portion from the outer surface so this is an outer layer so let us consider an inner layer so i just removed some outer layer and the inside the shaft at a radius r the moment for this d is to e and this moment is less and this you can find out as small r into theta so the angle the angular rotation is theta only this angle through which it rotates is theta but d is equal to r into theta whereas bc is equal to maximum radius r into theta so if you consider the inner layer the shear strain is d by l since d is small the shear strain is also less on the inner surface so d by l will give the shear strain on an inner layer just below ab just below ab on the inner layer you have a fiber fd now d moves to e as a result of this torque applied d moves to e so d e by l will give the shear strain on that layer so phi is equal to d e by l and d e you can find out d e as r into theta okay d e is equal to r theta so we'll get r theta by l and shear strain is equal to shear stress by modulus of rigidity and from hooke's law shear strain is shear stress by modulus of rigidity assuming a torque applied is within the elastic limit of the material so tau by g is equal to r theta by l once again you can rearrange and get shear stress as g theta by l into r so this gives another equation 2 now comparing the equation 1 and 2 we can see that shear stress is directly proportional to the radius r on the surface also shear stress is g theta by l into r in capital r so that is a maximum radius so this part was a constant uh, g is a modulus of rigidity which is a constant uh, for a given material and l is a constant for a given shaft and theta is a constant for uh, an applied torque if you are applying a, a specific value of torque theta also will be constant for that torque applied so when c a torque is applied theta is common for all the layers angular rotation is common for all the layers so g theta by l is going to be a constant for a given material shaft and applied torque so shear stress is given by this constant into r so that is equation 1 now again shear stress on an inner layer is g theta by l that is same constant into r so that indicates that the shear stress only depends on r and it is directly proportional to radius r so shear stress is directly proportional to radius r and maximum shear stress uh, happens when r is equal to capital r or on the surface so maximum shear stress you get as g e theta by l into uh, r so this is a maximum shear stress uh, which occurs on the surface of the shaft so from that you will get tau by r and tau by r is is also equal to tau max by r because g theta by l is tau by r and g theta by l from here is tau max by r so the ratio of shear stress to radius will be a constant at any given radius ratio of shear stress to radius will be a constant so tau by r is equal to tau max by r now let us consider the cross section of the shaft which resists the torque now as a result of this torque applied the shear stresses are induced and this shear stress are uh, induced on the surface which is given by g theta by l into r so that is maximum so this uh, on the outer surface the material is uh, offering more resistance maximum resistance because 
that portion is subjected to maximum strain so on the surface the material undergoes maximum strain so that portion will be offering maximum stress and it uh, also uh, given by tau max is equal to e theta by l into r at any uh, other radius the shear stress is less and it is linearly varying and at the center the shear stress will be zero because it's proportional shear stress induced is proportional to the radius when r is zero shear stress is zero when r is capital r or maximum radius you will have maximum shear stress so you will have a linear variation for the shear stress so you can say tau max by capital r is equal to tau divided by r at any radius r tau by r is also equal to tau max by r now let us consider a differential area on the cross section of the shaft now this shaft has to offer the resistance when torque is applied when the torque is applied on the shaft each layer should resist this torque otherwise the that cross section will shear so due to the torque applied there is a tendency to shear the material can shear and fail so the cross section has to resist this torque so it is offering uh, a resistance each section has to offer a resistance uh, let us see how the resistance is formed now each uh, small elemental area on the uh, shaft cross section is offering a small resistance now let us take a differential area on the cross section of the shaft and at a radius r so uh, shear stress is g theta by l into r so shear stress at a radius r is g theta by l into r now this will contribute to a small force okay so the stress into area will give that force resisted by this small area so df the resisting force offered by that differential area is g theta by l into r da g theta by l into r is the shear stress into area will give the differential force resisted by this area so that is so much resisting force that area is offering against the torque now this force will contribute to a resisting torque and the force into the radius that will give the torque resisting torque offered by this area so since the uh, external torque is clockwise Uh, this resisting force should form an anti clockwise torque so you are applying a clockwise torque on that this is resisting torque should be opposite in direction so this resisting torque is a uh, force into the radius r so this small elemental area is offering a small uh, resisting torque which is equal to the force into radius the the differential torque offered by that uh, elemental area is df into r so that is df is this df into r or g theta by l into r square da r into r r square da so that is differential torque resisted by this elemental area now we have to find out the total resisting torque offered by this cross section so you have to consider all such smaller elements on the entire surface you have to consider all such elements and uh, total area put together how much uh, resisting torque it can apply so that you can find out by integrating this for the entire area of cross section of the shaft so if you integrate this you will get the resisting torque and this resisting torque offered by the cross section should be equal to the applied torque so if you integrate this you will get the resisting torque and that resisting torque should be equal to the applied torque t so total resisting torque is integral of that uh, dt dt is the differential torque resisted by an element now the integral of that will give the total resisting torque now in the resisting torque is equal to the applied torque on the shaft 
for equilibrium the each cross section should offer a resisting torque and that should be equal to the applied torque so this resisting torque is equal to t now t is equal to g theta by l which is a constant as i explained earlier because g is a material property l is length of the shaft for a given shaft length is constant and theta is also can be considered as a constant for a, an applied torque so g theta by l is a constant for a given material shaft and applied torque into integral r square d a so g theta by l into integral r square d a so integral r square d a uh, it's a second moment of area d a into r that is the moment of area that can be considered as area into distance so that is moment of this area and moment of moment of area that is second moment of area so that is d a into r into r r square d a that is considered as second moment of area now integrating that that will give the polar moment of inertia of the cross section so integral r square d a is known as polar moment of inertia of the cross section which you would have studied in uh, your engineering mechanics topic so you can replace this integral r square d a by you know, the notation j which is a common notation used for polar moment of inertia so integral r square d a i'll replace by j for j is a polar moment of inertia of the um, cross section of the shaft combining equation 3 and 4 this is uh, equation 4 and equation 3 is tom x is equal to g theta by l into r or tom x by r is equal to g theta by l so you get t by j t by j is equal to g theta by l there you get tom x by r is also g theta by l so t by j is equal to tom x by r is equal to g theta by l so from this you get t by j is equal to g theta by l t by j is equal to g theta by l from there you get tom x by r is equal to g theta by l so tom x by r is g theta by l and even t by j is g theta by l so you can write t by j is equal to tom x by r is equal to g theta by l so this is known as torsion equation okay. t by j is equal to tom x by r is equal to g theta by l so tom x by r is also equal to tau by smaller okay the ratio of stress to corresponding radius will remain constant so this is maximum shear stress on the surface and corresponding radius or if any other radius tau by r that is also constant now in in the derivation of this torsion equation we have made some assumptions and the, we assume that material is homogeneous and isotropic that means the material uh, composition remains same and it uh, properties uh, remain same in all the directions and material obeys hooke's law so we have taken that shear strain as ratio of shear stress to modulus of rigidity so if it obeys hooke's law only you can use the shear stress by modulus of rigidity as a shear strain and also the plane sections of the shaft remains plane and do not work under applied torque all the plane cross sections of the shaft should remain plane there should not be any warpage under uh, this torque applied and all uh, ready remain straight before uh, and after application of torque so the radius of the shaft will not uh, deform under the action of the torque applied that's all for today thank you for watching